most welcome to Astoria Spanama, History Reconnaissance. This time we go back to 1968, the Vietnam War and the Battle of Saigon. The year 1968 saw major developments in the Vietnam War. The military operations started on New Year's Day with an attack on the US Fire Support Base Burt by the North Vietnamese People's Army and the VC, the Viet Cong. Our focus in this video is the Tet Offensive and the fighting in and around Saigon in South Vietnam in the beginning of the year and also during the so-called Little Tet in May. And please, like, share and subscribe, it means a lot to us. The Tet Offensive was planned as a massive, simultaneous attack on the major cities and provincial capitals of South Vietnam. It was scheduled to take place during Tet, the Vietnamese Lunar New Year celebration. It was traditionally a time of decreased fighting. In December 1967, following an attack on the US Marine combat base at Kisan, 50,000 American troops were sent in to defend the area, thereby weakening US positions elsewhere. This American response played into the Viet Cong strategy to clear the way for the surprise Tet Offensive, in which communist forces attacked Saigon, Hue, and over 100 other urban areas. Everybody was out of town practically. We all left because we knew there wouldn't be anything happening at Tet. So the newcomers come in and say, boy, uh, this is very dangerous. Oh, don't worry about it. There won't be any trouble. And there wasn't any trouble. So I think for eight years, Jop cultivated us to think exactly this. He was going to only use this once, and this was the time. The total takeover of the capital Saigon was not intended nor believed feasible by the Viet Cong. They rather had six main targets in the city, with 35 battalions of VC were to attack and capture. The Arvin Joint General Staff Compound near Tan Son Nat International Airport, the Independence Palace, the Jewish Embassy, Tan Son Nat Air Base, the Long Bin Naval Headquarters and the National Radio Station. it was Tet, or Tet Nguyen Dan, the Vietnamese New Year, the sound of firecracks exploding masks that of gunfire, given an element of surprise to the Viet Cong attacks. This was a major escalation in one of the largest military campaigns of the Vietnam War.
early February, the Communist High Command realized that none of their military objectives were being met, and they halted any further attacks on fortified positions. Sporadic fighting continued in Saigon until March 8. Some sections of the city were left badly damaged by the combat, and U.S. retaliatory air and artillery strikes in particular. The Chinese district of Cholon suffered especially, with perhaps hundreds of civilians killed in the American counterattacks. The North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong attacked major political military installations in and around Saigon. At Tan Son Nut Air Base, more than 670 PAVN are killed and 26 captured for the loss of 22 US and 29 Arvin. In the attack on the Joint General Staff Compound, 10 VC are killed and 10 captured for the loss of 17 US killed. In the attacks on Bien Hoa Air Base and the Long Wien Post, 527 VC were killed, 47 captured for the loss of 11 US killed. In the Battle of Cholon, 170 VC were killed for the loss of 12 US killed. A presidential press conference. The cabinet room of the White House, the 2nd of February, 1968. This tape is off record and not for release. We have detailed information on Ho Chi Minh's order governing that offensive. Part of it is called a general uprising. We know the object was to overthrow the constitutional government in Saigon and to create a situation in which we and the Vietnamese would be willing to accept a communist-dominated coalition government. Another part of that offensive was planned as a massive attack across the frontiers of South Vietnam by North Vietnamese units. We have already seen the general uprising. General Westmoreland's headquarters report that the communists appear to have lost over 10,000 killed, some 2,300 detained. The United States has lost 249 men killed. The Vietnamese, who had to carry the brunt of the fighting in the cities, lost 553 killed as of my most recent report from the Westmoreland headquarters. The Republic of Vietnam regarded the Viet Cong as criminals who violated the security laws of South Vietnam and are consequently were subject to trial for their crimes. As indigenous offenders, the Viet Cong did not technically merit prisoner of war status, although they were entitled to humane treatment under Article 3 Geneva Prisoner of War Conventions. Under Article 12, the United States retained responsibility for treatment of its captives in accordance with the Geneva Convention, even after transfer of captives to the South Vietnamese. At the same time, the United States was concerned that Americans held captive in North and South Vietnam receive humane treatment and be accorded the full benefits and protections of prisoners of war. In the South, where the government of South Vietnam had tried and publicly executed some Viet Cong agents, there had been retributory executions of Americans by the Viet Cong. Good morning, I'm Army Specialist Jerry W. Gears. AFVN News on the Hour, compiled from major American networks, wire services, and military sources. Now, complete details. The news in Paris, the first formal session, the peace talks is over, and correspondent Bill Butel is there. As the first session of the substantive peace talks here in Paris broke up after six and a half hours of negotiation, all the four participants in the talk seemed content, at least, with what had happened inside the old Hotel Majestic. If the length of meetings means anything, and usually it's considered that it does mean something, then the meeting today was probably a qualified success. To improve the position at the Paris talks, which opened on 13th May 1968, the North Vietnamese opened the second phase of the general offensive in late April. US intelligence sources estimated that between February and May, the North Vietnamese dispatched 50,000 men down the Ho Chi Minh Trail to replace losses incurred during the earlier fighting. During the early morning hours of May 4, PAVN and VC units initiated the second phase of the offensive. 
known by the South Vietnamese and American as Mini Tet, by striking 119 targets throughout South Vietnam, including Saigon. This time, however, Allied intelligence was better prepared, stripping away the element of surprise. Most of the Communist forces were intercepted by Allied screening elements before they reached their target. Thirteen visa battalions, however, managed to slip through the cordon and once again plunged the capital into chaos. Severe fighting occurred at Pulam, where it took two days to rout out the VC 267th Local Force Battalion, around the Y Bridge and at Tanson Nut. By May 12, however, it was all over. VC forces withdrew from the area, leaving behind over 3,000 dead. Militarily, the Tet Offensive was a disaster for the Communists, who suffered devastating losses. However, while the offensive was a crushing military defeat, the Communists scored a huge psychological victory that would ultimately help them win the war. The graphic images of US casualties suffered during the offensive helped stoke anti-war sentiment among the American people. That's all folks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.